Hi everyone, in this lecture I will be explaining you what are the different factors that will increase or decrease the red blood cell production also we call it as regulation of erythropoiesis. The first important factor that regulates the erythropoiesis is the hormone erythropoietin. In short form erythropoietin is EPO. This is a hormone erythropoietin. This is mainly secreted from the kidneys. 90% of the erythropoietin hormone is secreted from the kidneys. Kidney is the major organ for excretion. But kidneys also act as an endocrine organ in secreting the hormone erythropoietin. The remaining 10% of the erythropoietin is secreted from the liver. So, liver will secrete the remaining 10% of the erythropoietin. Now, we will see which are the cells within the kidneys that will secrete the erythropoietin. They are the peritubular capillary cells. See, this is a nephron. The nephron is surrounded by, this is a nephron. Nephron is surrounded by capillaries and these capillaries are lined by endothelial cells and there are some interstitial cells. So, these interstitial cells and the endothelial cells of the peritubular capillaries will secrete the erythropoietin. So, the major stimulant for erythropoietin secretion from these cells is decreased oxygen content to these cells. So, whenever there is renal hypoxia or decrease in the oxygen supply to these cells, they act like a sensors. They will sense the decreased oxygen levels in the blood and thereby they secrete more erythropoietin into the blood. Therefore, the most important stimulus for erythropoietin secretion is decreased arterial oxygen content. That can happen when a subject is climbing to high altitude where the oxygen content in the atmosphere is very less. The subject is breathing air with less oxygen content and the less oxygen is delivered to the tissues and the tissues will suffer hypoxia. So, the subject when they go to the high altitude where the atmospheric oxygen is less, there, that will result in tissue hypoxia and these act as a sensor for hypoxia and they secrete erythropoietin. Now, let us see what are the different actions of erythropoietin, how this erythropoietin acts and how it increases the red blood cell production. The erythropoietin that is secreted from the kidneys will be released into the circulation and from the circulation it reaches the bone marrow and within the bone marrow it binds to the precursor cells for RBC production. So, these cells will have the receptors and these receptors will pick up the erythropoietin and this cell will be activated by increasing its protein content. So, this cell starts multiplying. So, these precursor cells undergo cell replication, multiplication to form more number of cells and also they start differentiating into proerythroblasts and these proerythroblasts also will start multiplying to give rise to more number of colonies of proerythroblasts and this proerythroblasts which are larger in number will differentiate to the next series of uh, red blood cell blast cells will give rise to more and more next series of uh, blast cells the early intermediate and late normal blast. So, that is how the, the erythropoietin acting on the stem cells or the precursor cells will cause increased cell division and increased cell differentiation so that more number of RBCs are produced in short period of time. So, the cell cycle duration is also cut short and more number of cells are replicated and more and more differentiation is happening. So, in a short period of time more amount of reticulocytes are entering into the circulation. So, you can see reticulocytosis. increased reticulocytes within the circulation and more RBCs are formed from these reticulocytes. So, whenever there is increased erythropoietin secretion, the RBC production is also increased by increasing the cell division and cell differentiation. Now, let us see what are the different factors that will increase erythropoietin secretion other than the decreased oxygen content in the blood. So, one major factor is hypoxia. Other than hypoxia, what are the different factors that will increase the erythropoietin secretion? There are various hormones that increase the erythropoietin secretion like 
anterior pituitary hormones anterior pituitary hormones mainly growth hormone adrenocorticotrophic hormone prolactin thyroid stimulating hormone all these anterior pituitary hormones will increase the erythropoietin secretion thereby increasing the rbc production so if at all this anterior pituitary gland is removed we call it as hypophysectomy surgical removal of anterior pituitary gland may result in increased rbc production or rbc production is hampered right so that might result in anemia thyroid gland secreting hormones like thyroxin also will stimulate the erythropoietin secretion so whenever there is hyperthyroidism rbc production will be more in case of hypothyroidism rbc production is less and resulting in anemia next androgens androgens like testosterone in adult male will stimulate the erythropoietin secretion from the kidneys and this erythropoietin will induce more and more rbc production that is the reason in adult male the rbc count is more than adult females adrenocortical hormones so the adrenal gland glucocorticoids mainly they will act on increasing the rbc production by stimulating the kidneys to produce more erythropoietin so that is the reason in case of increased adrenal gland hormones like glucocorticoids in case of cushing syndrome there can be mild increase in the rbc count rbc count will be more in case of cushing syndrome so adrenocortico hormones or the glucocorticoids also increase the rbc production by increasing the erythropoietin secretion so these are the hormones now third one is after 120 days of rbcs in circulation they become senile they become old their lifespan is over by 120 days and at the end they are destroyed within the splenic sinuses or the red pulp the breakdown fragments of the red blood cells they also act like a stimulant and they stimulate the erythropoietin secretion so we call them as hemolysates hemolysates will stimulate the erythropoietin secretion and induce rbc production so whenever there is more and more rbc destruction happening the rbc destruction happening itself is sending the signals to the kidney to release more erythropoietin and this erythropoietin can induce increased rbc production so thereby the cells are replaced the dying cells are replaced by newly forming rbcs by a negative feedback mechanism newly formed rbcs will be replacing those rbcs which are undergoing destruction so that the red blood cell count is within the normal limits the next fourth factor that can increase the erythropoietin secretion are vasoconstrictor drugs so these drugs which constrict the blood vessels will cause decrease in the blood flow to the kidneys that will result in renal hypoxia and again this renal hypoxia will be a potent stimulant for erythropoietin secretion thereby increasing the red blood cell production the catecholamines the sympathetics are vasoconstrictors the fifth is the nucleotides so the nucleotides like cyclic amp nad nad various nucleotides can also act on the kidneys to increase erythropoietin secretion and thereby increasing the red blood cell production now let us see what reduces the erythropoietin secretion any factor that suppresses the erythropoietin secretion there are very few factors that can suppress the erythropoietin secretion like if there is any chronic renal condition the tissues the renal tissue is suppressed the kidneys is not secreting more erythropoietin in case of chronic renal diseases estrogen yeah estrogen can also suppress the erythropoietin certain drugs can also suppress the erythropoietin secretion like theophylline now let's understand the role of various vitamins in rbc production like vitamin b12 folic acid vitamin c see what is the role of this vitamin b12 folic acid and vitamin c in rbc production the main function of this vitamin b12 folic acid or vitamin c is to synthesize the dna within the cell so for dna synthesis all these vitamins are essential so once the dna is synthesized that can replicate to 
duplicate to DNA or it can duplicate to RNA and it can synthesize proteins within the cell. So thereby the cell can divide with the increased DNA content, the nucleus can divide, the cell can divide, therefore the cell division happens with synthesis of uh, DNA and the cells are also getting matured. So for the synthesis of DNA and maturation of cell, vitamin B12, folic acid and vitamin C are playing vital role and also with the maturation of cell and cell division, they can also differentiate to next form of cells so that the RBC production is quick. Differentiation of cells. This vitamin B12 and folic acid acting on increasing the DNA content and increasing the RNA content and protein content is also increased thereby the proteins of the hemoglobin are also increased. So that may result in increased synthesis of hemoglobin within the cell. The hemoglobin synthesis also will be more with vitamin B12 and folic acid. So what happens if there is a deficiency of vitamin B12, folic acid? The cells, the precursor cells will not undergo cell division or cell maturation or conversion of these cells into mature RBCs. So within the peripheral blood, we can see these precursor cells only. The precursor cells or the immature cells, we call them as blast cells. The pro-erythroblast, early intermediate or late normoblast are the precursor cells. So in the peripheral blood, we can find these precursor cells. And we know the blast cells are larger in size compared to the mature RBCs. So what is the size of the RBC in the peripheral blood? It is larger than the normal. Are the mature RBCs or the immature RBCs? They are precursor immature RBCs. So we find the larger sized cells which are immature, we call them as megaloblasts. Megaloblasts are seen in peripheral blood in case of vitamin B12 folic acid deficiency. So hemoglobin content is normal within this megaloblast. So under the classification of anemia, this comes under macrocytic normochromic anemia. The cell size is large, but the hemoglobin content is normal. This vitamin C is also having one more role in iron absorption. So in iron absorption, vitamin C plays a role. So from where? Iron absorption from the intestinal epithelial cells. So if at all vitamin C is deficient, the cell maturation is also not happening and also the adequate amount of iron from the intestine will not be taken in. So if less the iron within the circulation, so less iron is reaching into the bone marrow, so hemoglobin synthesis also will be reduced in case of vitamin C deficiency. So the role of vitamin C is to maturation of the cell and also for the iron absorption from the intestinal epithelial cells. Now let's understand the various minerals or metals that are required for RBC or hemoglobin synthesis. The most important metal that is required for hemoglobin synthesis is iron. Iron is needed for heme potion synthesis. So iron is the very important element for heme synthesis or hemoglobin synthesis. Along with iron, there are other elements like copper, calcium, cobalt, nickel. So all these are also required for hemoglobin synthesis. So the main important role of these is they are acting like catalytic agents in incorporation of iron into the heme. So this iron which is in Fe2 plus state this has to be incorporated into the pyrrole ring. So this is a tetrapyrrole ring of heme and this iron has to go into the center of this and it has to bind with the heme pyrrole rings. The heme is made up of iron and the four pyrrole rings. This iron has to be incorporated into the four pyrrole rings to form the heme. 
for the synthesis of heme iron has to be incorporated into the four pyrrol rings so this incorporation is facilitated by these catalytic agents mainly the copper cobalt nickel and manganese also and one more important factor that is required for rbc production or hemoglobin synthesis is the proteins so if there is dietary deficiency of protein intake rbc or hemoglobin synthesis will be definitely affected the globin production is definitely affected summarize various factors or various requirements for rbc production are the erythropoietin hormone and those factors that will increase the erythropoietin and decrease the erythropoietin the special maturation factors vitamin b12 folic acid vitamin c so many metals like iron along with iron copper calcium cobalt nickel all these are required for the rbc production and the hemoglobin synthesis i hope you all understood the important role of erythropoietin and the special maturation vitamins like vitamin b12 and folic acid we'll meet in the next lecture thank you all